All right, this time I'd like to review an extendable baton. This one is the Talon Air, made by ASP, or ASP, depending on how you want to pronounce it. And uh, this is definitely a more high quality model compared to most of the, the cheaper uh, extendable batons that you find on the market. You can find this for around 125 US dollars or 160 Canadian. Uh, by the way, this baton is not illegal in Canada. There is some confusion about that. Sometimes people think that all extendable batons are prohibited, but that's not true. It's just the automatic type. So if the uh, baton is the type that opens automatically at the push of a button, that is prohibited. This type is perfectly legal. In fact, it is even legal to carry it. However, a police officer might ask you why you're carrying it. And if you then say for self-defense, you can be in trouble. So it's still a bit of a silly gray zone, but uh, at any rate. So you push in the button here and then you just fold it in. This is a huge advantage over the friction locks, which in order to close, you have to bang them against a hard surface or you know beat them like this on a hard surface to, to make them loosen up, then you can fold them in. It's just a lot less convenient than this. All you need to do is just push the button and you can close it with one hand. One of the main advantages of an extendable baton is definitely the intimidation factor. If somebody threatens you and you suddenly whip this thing out, it, it'll make them pause at the very least and reconsider their action most likely. So um, with something like this, there is a chance that you will never need to use it. And it's exactly one of the reasons why you would carry a tool like this, in my opinion. It's not a guarantee that you will get out of an attack unharmed, but there is a chance that they won't bother you if you draw this. So I was definitely interested to see how this aluminum version would hold up compared to the steel. It is certainly noticeably lighter. For the abusive testing, I used it on a can and uh, it did quite well as a trash compactor of sorts. It dented the can quite easily and didn't take any damage from it. The coating is still flawless, no problem at all. And then I also used it to break a piece of wood, which puts quite a bit of stress on the baton, of course. But again, no problem whatsoever. I did something similar with a cheaper Smith & Wesson baton, which was bent out of shape as a result. This one here, still perfectly straight. I did a few other tests as well, one on a coconut covered in 20% ballistic gel, and uh, that is the extra dense variety. Uh, it was pretty difficult to crack the coconut, but a few swings did the job. And I'm sure somebody who is stronger and professionally trained with a baton could crack that coconut in one or two swings. The squash was quite tough, especially with that setup that I had, using foam to absorb some of the damage, considering that a body is not fully rigid either, so it would also have some give. And um, yeah, did just fine. So I'm definitely convinced that this would be an effective self-defense tool. I mean, you could say that if it's good enough for a police officer, it's good enough for a civilian, right? Which, of course, I realize is an overgeneralization and doesn't necessarily always apply, but um, in this case, I believe it does. It's quite a noticeable difference when you strike with the tip as opposed to further down. Not surprising since it concentrates the force on a smaller striking surface. And uh, I'm pretty sure that if you were in the very unfortunate situation of facing an attacker armed with a knife and you were to strike at their hand with the tip, they would most certainly drop the knife unless they are drugged out of their mind. But even then, you may do enough structural damage to the hand to uh, render it useless during that encounter. I was wondering if you could even thrust with this type of baton, which wouldn't necessarily be overly effective, but it's always good to have options, right? But it does not seem like it holds up to that. It, do, it will actually collapse if you do that repeatedly. Uh, it could hold up to one such thrust maybe, but then you may have to swing it again to lock it. Deployment, of course, is very easy. There's nothing you need to worry about, no buttons or anything else to fiddle with. You just start swinging and it'll be ready, which is excellent because in a stressful self-defense situation, you may not be able to do any fine manipulation. Uh, your manual dexterity will be a lot lower and you may not have the, the presence of mind to, to just figure out, okay, what, what was this again? What, what do I have to do? Um, because, well, you're focused on the threat. And with this, you can stay focused on the threat. You just 
you just start striking if you're um, if you're untrained that's really all you need to do if you have practice and you go into a specific posture good but it's strictly speaking if, if this is all you can do <laughs> frantically swinging it will work this is actually the first baton I've tried that I would personally feel hundred percent comfortable relying upon um, not that I could for self-defense against people because of Canadian law. However, even in Canada, you would be allowed to carry this for defense against animals. And if you live elsewhere, if you live in the United States, you know, depending on the state, you may be allowed to carry this for personal protection against two-legged predators, as they say. The build quality is remarkable. I'm very satisfied with that and think it's well worth the money. In fact, if it wasn't for the low weight and the packaging, of course, I probably wouldn't even have known that this is not steel because it is as tough as you would expect from a steel baton. In fact, it's a lot more damage resistant than a lot of the cheaper ones, which are made of mild unhardened steel. So. I really cannot complain about that at all. Of course, due to its nature as a collapsible baton, there will always be some rattle when it's extended, but definitely less so with this one than with other models I've tried. And when it's folded in, there's absolutely nothing. You don't have any unnecessarily wide gaps. There's really only enough space for the individual parts to slide into one another. And the mechanism works very well. In the beginning, it can be a little stiff, but if you just play around with it for a while, it gets broken in very nicely. And at this point here, as you can see, it's very easy to just close it with one hand. So that's quite nice. Finally, I also find the foam grip worth mentioning. It's not as resistant to wear and tear as a rubber grip, but personally, I find it a lot more comfortable. It's the exact right balance between traction and comfort. It's not going to slip in your hand, but at the same time, it's not going to give you blisters either. As usual, I'll post the specifications and where you can find it down below in the video description. In Canada, it's surprisingly difficult to find these. Uh, stores usually only carry the cheap batons, and there are very few that actually ship these to civilians, even though it is completely legal. But I guess some store owners are just not comfortable with it for whatever reason. I never get that. I mean, civilians should be allowed to carry a non-lethal tool for self-defense. It's just... It's a no-brainer to me, but whatever. Let's not get into the politics. So um, my friend Dave at Hoplite Tactical Supplies in Prince George sells these. I got this from him and uh, I can recommend his store without a doubt. Of course, I know the guy. I know he's reliable and everything, so no worries there. So if you want one of these, I definitely recommend ordering from him. And that's it. Hope you found this helpful and thanks for watching. Now I have to get back to my training to become a baton ninja. You know, reverse grip ninjas. Yeah, yeah, I'll be on my way. Oh, there's one more thing I want to show you. Apparently, there is a gimmicky mirror that you can clip onto your baton. And this has got to be the most sensual knife attacker I've ever seen. He really seems to love that wall. Or maybe he just gets off on sneaking up on people. Um, yeah, a little disturbing.